I love Aether, one, two, three. Can you guys hear me? <sighs> What's up, guys? Welcome to podcast number 15. Today, I'm joined by Panshui, Washable, and um, Kenny. So some of you guys might know them, some of you might not. I'll let them introduce themselves, starting with the person eating. <clears throat> <laughs> Hey! Remember to subscribe to OnlyPans. <clears throat> oh my god. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, go Washable. Uh, hi, I'm Washable Pie. Uh, I stream once a month. And yeah. We out here. And Kenny? What's up guys? My name is Electric on Twitch or Kenny14 in game. I'm also a once a month Andy. We stream once a month. No bamboozles. Every time. Very consistent. And uh, yeah, hopefully you guys like this uh, very special podcast with, you know, two very rare streamers you'll never see because, you know, once a month streamer, right? So yeah, it took a lot of effort to pay them to come here. Anyways, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm X Guy King, if you guys didn't know. Um, so first time legend player, by the way. First time legend, but oh yeah. So everyone in this art, this uh, podcast today is actually uh, did finish legend. So we'll be going over a few topics there, and it'll be interesting to hear some thoughts about that. Except your low legend. Oh, technically we are the top four percent. So I mean that that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Put it on your LinkedIn plus one rep. I got you. I I can't even really refute that because I I I, I was. Bottom of the legend rung. <laughs> hey, the Gabe, it's okay. We were both the same rank. Ah, thank you. Makes me feel better. I, I'm I'm right there with you. All right, all right. Um, so I mean, it goes straight into the first topic. Yeah, what's your feelings now that the RT season is over? How was the push? How was the grind? What did you think of the meta? <clears throat> um, what helped you a lot through RT itself? Like, what units do you feel like for yourself were especially impactful? Uh, let's let's just start with let's just start with the person eating again. Actually, no. Okay, let, let's let him eat. Sorry, let's start okay. with Kenny. Oh, fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, no, I got it. I got it. It's fine, dude. Falcon Clary and A Ras hard carry. Those two. That's it. Okay. Synergizes okay. with practically any kind of team. Um, really broken. Free to play too. I'm not gonna lie. They have probably one of the most insane kits, especially to change units. They're kind of scary. Let's put it that way. <clears throat> it's fair yeah Bo both of them are three stars too like I i'm surprised like as three to as free to play units like how how strong of a unit they are like granted like falconer clearly is like nerfed now too compared to before so I i'm surprised how strong of a unit they are in the in the meta all right um yeah kenny what what's your thoughts on the whole thing yeah so i actually finished um rank 13 in legend so i was pretty consistent <laughs> i think leading up to the final day had some help with, um, you know, talking around with the fleet guild members because they all play RTA as well. So I agree with Pantry here. Like A Ross and Flurry just add so much value to your team because they don't only just, you know, provide additional souls and other, you know, kind of extra damage and especially mitigation for the rest of your team. But they also are three cost units, so everyone has like, you know, access to those units, right? Obviously, there are the strong ML fives. Obviously, I think. You know, units like A Tywin, even though he was a little bit weaker against units like ML Crow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, units like A Tywin, especially ML Violet in that last week, I think had very consistent win rate in, you know, that last span of games, especially when people, you know, really try to button up and play more safe comps, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's also one of the things I saw, like, in the beginning of the RTA season when it first started, everyone, like, a lot of people, majority wise, were still running speed set, like, fast Rylets. And then, like, I saw, like, a shift. More and more people started shifting more and more to Lifesteal Rylet until, like, majority of it became, like, Lifesteal Rylet eventually. Um, I guess maybe for yeah. the sustain and, like, you know, they didn't want him to be so squishy. I, yeah, I, I think, think ultimately... Go ahead, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Um, so, basically, I think the transition to why people start bailing in, like, Lifesteal Rylet and all these like, other bruiser, they just start making, like, all these carries that are typically we build to be very fast. Like, we used to have speed Rylet, speed Sea Serens, but mm -hmm. now it's, like, a little bit slower. I'm pretty sure it's just because then everybody just really aggressive. That, that's, that's, that's the thing. Everything gets one-shotted a little bit too fast now. 
everything is decided very quickly. At least um, if you run like Lifesteal on Ryla or T-Cern, you can actually have a chance to come back. Otherwise, most of the time, if you don't run anything at all, they can't work as a standalone unit, and then they just end up dying. That's their biggest problem. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, sorry, what were you going to say, Kenny? Yeah, so like, I, I didn't push in the first season of RTA, so this was actually like the first season that I really, you know, put my like, you know, dedication and effort into like playing RTA. Mm -hmm. I think like the season was actually pretty diverse, right? Because you know, you have the handful of people that do take like the lifesteal rally and things like that for like late game scaling comps because like the frenzy changes weren't implemented yet, right? And I think it brought out like this other like really cool niche of players that just that completely relied on gab gaming, right? Which is you put your thief on you know Alexis basket and you pray to God that you hit your greater attack buff, right? And that like there was like a sort of like weird balance between like you know people that decided to bulk down and play a more consistent comp versus people that would just try to like int and sprint and try to gain as many points as possible, right? Because you play so many games. Mm -hmm. And to me, I think like this RTA season, or at least that's like season two in particular, that last week was really really fun because you really did see it, you know, a great diverse pool of like different units. I think more so in the last little bit, like. I think a lot of people shifted a lot of their stuff around, whether it was to catch people off guard or to handle different metas. I feel like, like, it, it was, um, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know. Like, I felt like in the first part of season two, like when it first started, um, while people were, you know, still earlier on in the season before the last few weeks, like, most people were just playing tanks. And then, like, it started to shift a little bit more, but. I'm not sure. I didn't play too much in the earlier of the season two RTA. I'm not uh, too sure. Season season two RTA was basically true damage. It was literally just ML crowd. Well, especially yeah, game. especially when ML crowd yeah. came out. Yeah, like so, that. I, I think like early season two wasn't really too much. I think the biggest change was the addition of ML crowd because then he basically shifted the entire meta of what we actually used to play. Um, before I used to be able to like play specific debuffers. A Tywin used to be a little bit more prominent. We got mm -hmm. to see like a lot more. Um, uh, scary disrupting units, but when uh, what is it? Emo crowd got added into the fray along with like Emo haste and all this. Mm -hmm. It became very scary. We started seeing like true damage comps that literally pop out of nowhere, and people end up just playing like turn one cleave. I remember I literally like mocked Kenny, and then he literally just whooped an entire team of Emo fives, Emo crowd, Emo haste, RV, and S ten. I'm like, wait, what am I doing? Emo five abuser. My, like my entire team just got wiped like turn one. I, I couldn't even do it. The play draft. And, that that turn one draft is kind of scary when you start playing like very tanky units and mm -hmm. they could just like murder practically anything including your rylet it's kind of scary you know there's like yeah. no threat to it because they're too tanky they heal they have they have like turn one sustained or turn two sustained right afterwards so many things okay yeah that ml5 team in particular was so scary because you took ml haste right so mm -hmm. if you really decide to like bulk down and like let's say you take a reviver like ruel which is pretty popular at that time uh-huh like you revive your unit and then he gets S3 again. So like you lose all your like tempo at all. Like and then mm -hmm. you just what do so you do? It, you it was, it's like a like if you, when you pick the ML Hather, it's also ends up being like a, a counter pick before pre, they even pick uh Ruel. And even if they don't, ML Hayes still has his uses there. So Yeah. ML Hayes definitely being one of the uh more safe honestly, he's not a knight, but honestly, I think most people would technically count him as a knight. Mm -hmm. they because say it's they passive. Take more or horsemen and then like ml haste no that's that's five nights right there bro <laughs> i don't know what <laughs> true that. uh washball what about you what, what, what were some impactful units for you and what do you feel about uh, the season? i mean the most impactful thing for me was greater attack buff uh <sighs> i was what you called a gab gamer uh, uh but honestly like my draft was pretty uh i forget who called it. i think it was hyperion called called it this uh, a rocky draft so I drafted like Emil Kral, Emil Hayes, and then RB, Kron, and Steny, or like RB, mm. Kron, Flitica, or like RB, Kron, X DPS unit. So you mean YOLO? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of just went all in. I'm just like, you know what? If I kill him, I kill him. And if I uh, don't kill them, then we go to the next game. Okay. But, huh? I think so. None of you three cleave, right? From what I know. Uh, I. Oh, hi. You you got Flitica and you try you you were like right. working on it but right what happened? All right, so no, I still use that Flitica. It's not like I don't. I actually yeah. use it quite often. I use her in basically any kind of combination that I want. Mm -hmm. I use her with knights. I use her with like I don't exactly use her like the way that you think 
cleaves are or what most people think cleaves are mm-hmm. like what is it like a lot of key say dom yeah whatever kind of combination you guys really think about what i really do is like turn one mages um basically this is in conjunction with like falcon Clurry, uh falcon Clurry, Ephletica, tomoka or top model luluka specter tenibria and like plus one this plus one could either be like a knight to add mitigation or add dual attack like a ras or just have something like a tywin to <laughs> deny something or maybe even fcc mm-hmm. uh that's the kind of draft that i go for i personally think that that draft is actually really strong just because then it just wipes one immediately and then it just ends up uh controlling the team very very slowly because you're just melting one by one um it's actually really a flexible draft too because uh the first two initial drafts really is just f clary s10 a um those two being just there basically means that you could actually flex pick practically anything you want you could transition into a knight you can transition into like you know a little bit more slow aggressive bruisers or you could just go straight into a cleave really depending on how people draft right if someone ends up drafting like knights you could end up slowing down a little bit and then you could just draft something else to actually just like beat them down slowly um let's say for example they draft like aggressive in order to respond you just play knights and then if you if they start drafting like really really squishy like draft RB then you know what frick it Tomoka and everything else then you just like transition very quickly like I find like that draft so far has like been really impactful for like all my games and even till now even in preseason with all frenzy people are still playing very aggressive um, matches don't even last longer than like frenzy two or three. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So Super. I draft um pretty standard, right? So I also take like the A Ross and you know A Ravi, for example. And Cindy mm. being like a very core staple, mm. I think, to a lot of people, there really is value in just drafting like units like Basar or Flitico, especially in that like later two picks. Basar, I drafted quite a bit because I tuned him with um my Basar is pretty fast. He's like 280 speed or something with high effectiveness. Mm. And I put him on book, right? So I, I never soul burn his S3. And if you get 15% of it, it's whatever. But you can draft him in tangent with you know, ML Crow and A Tywin, for example, that have, you know, the 10 Soul Burn S3, right? Yeah. So you get your high tempo scaling right away. And if you really wanted to throw in a, you know, a Steny, right? You can, because the ML Crow and Steny combo is also very, very safe, right? You know, a lot of people take um, a lot of AoE damage or maybe SSB into a Steny. And the ML Crow just scales even faster when you have the Steny in the back. Too. So that draft in particular was pretty strong. And I dropped pretty, like, I draft heavy, like Soul Weavers and Nice, and it still worked out really well for me. Yeah, Flitica for me, like kind of what Kenny was saying, like uh, Flitica Basar in the very last rotation to almost like either guarantee a ban or like guarantee that I'm going to take the first turn because most people aren't running like uh, 280 Tomokas. I don't think I've ever seen a 280 Tomoka before, maybe. But uh, like if they pick Tomoka versus me and I had RB. Uh, I could pick that Flitica and then either trade bands or guarantee myself taking the first turn. Mm. And uh, it wasn't, I wouldn't really call it cleaving, but Flitica just as a like really like late pick or bizarre Tywin as like your last two picks is just super strong. Mm-hmm. Like it gives you uh, so much advantage. Like being able to sober an ML Tywin and not having to wait uh, like the full rotation until you have the 10 souls is actually huge. Yeah. Like, like you can like... actually just straight up win the game. Being able to like soul burn right away is really useful, especially so that like it, it's even more impactful with like Kenny's draft too. Like, because if he Basars, right, he strips most of the enemy team and then he goes into the well, whether it's ML Tywin or ML Crow and uh, that kind of stuff. And it's also hard for people to pick uh, ML Tywin if you pick ML Crow first, then mm-hmm. right? so okay. I, I think, oh, well, oh, no, just no, to add on. on really quick, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think the cooler thing about that draft in particular, right, is because you're taking the Flitica Basar last. Mm. So I, I work in finance, so I love playing around with numbers and stuff. <laughs> and if you think about, like, you know, statistic odds, when you see, like, people's drafts, when you open up with something like ML Crow and Steny in the very beginning, people don't expect you to take the um, the Basar and ML Tywin, right? They think, oh, this guy's going to, like, button down. I'm going to take, like, you know, you, you, you can reasonably expect the other team to draft, like, a Blue Crow Ruel, for example. And then you have at that spot to, you know, either pivot into more damage with, like, the ML Haste on the back, or you can just go full aggro with this, you know, Basar and a Tywin combo, right? And when, you, and when you draft, like, the Basar and a Tywin combo, like, the counterpicks to the basar a Tywin combo is very, very hard to draft around. Because usually those units that will counter those will be, you know, picked in a pair, right? And that, 
that takes a lot to counter one specific unit on your team when you have so much like utility on the rest of your team, right? So the tempo is definitely there, definitely mm. a little broken. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, we'll go to the second topic, which we'll still be talking similar about this, but um, it's thoughts on RTA frenzy changes, new sets. I feel like, I mean, I just, just to add on to what you were saying, like, I feel like that kind of draft might be equally or still just as good in the new changes, um, with the frenzy at least, wise. Um, more so about, like, I, I, I'm more afraid of the effectiveness still, but I, I want to know what your thoughts are on the effectiveness change, attack change, and if you think the new sets will have any impact in the RTA meta. So first off, I think the new sets are irrelevant right now because you shouldn't be farming them because there's no Hunt 13. Fair. Uh, hot take, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't think they actually have any impact at all because uh, like speed set is still going to be like king for like your force set and like immunity for RTA is, uh, I would say, almost a necessity. Like, so you never really want to not have immunity, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in terms of changes, as a Gab gamer, I love it. I just want to deal a lot of damage. You know, Gab gave them. Proc that greater attack puff, 40% chance to win, you know? But, uh, like, being serious, I think uh, I'm personally, like you said, I'm not a fan of the effectiveness change, per mm -hmm. se. Especially uh, given how, like, effectiveness and effect res already work in game. Yeah. It's incredibly difficult uh, to have enough either bulk stats plus effect res to matter uh and now they just made that even harder so like i don't know i i don't like the effectiveness change but i don't necessarily hate the like attack scaling change i guess because it weakens the knights true damage units a little bit right um and it makes the units that are you know bruisers or just pure damage dealers um their damage will go up with that um I, i'm actually surprised you said you feel like the sets have no impact I mean, like, I feel like for most people, they might not, but like, there's specific units where I think they could be very impactful, but maybe that's just placed on what you use. The only one that like I've seen people mess around with is like injury set SSB, but like matches aren't lasting that long. Mm. Like we kind of touched on it before, but like you were barely getting past like Frenzy 2, Frenzy 3. So like mm -hmm. the fights where like injury set would actually matter, uh, like you've probably either won or lost by that point anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It only takes like a couple turns for people to really decide. Really, it's just turn one of practically every single match will decide who's going to win the match or not. Um, yeah. If matches are really going that slow, to be fair, if you're going to be one of those people that literally drops like three knights, like Emil Crow, Crow, Ruel, and all this whatnot, I'm like, wait a wait a second, what are you even playing, right? Like, you're, if you're one of those people and you're expecting like, you know, maybe to have. To, to actually win the match, I don't think you're going to ever win the match at all. You're definitely going to be like one of those 50 50 gamers or like just preying on like some sort of RNG. But like Frenzy, honestly, like what only matter for those players. But I think the majority of players as of right now literally only plays based on counters, as in this unit counters this, this unit counters this, so on and so on. It's literally just been played like that. like I think left and right, I haven't seen like any matches where like unless I'm playing in uh, some previous tournament, which is like the Asia tournament, I played I saw some players literally just picked up like three knights, three knights of Ruel, and then a DPS. I'm like, what are you doing? It's like, how do you even play this match? It's it's technically not even it's not even a match. It's like that's like um season one mental mm, meta. You don't get anywhere with that anymore. If someone just like plays like super aggressive against that comp and just like burns away one i'm pretty sure that entire comp is dead or someone could just like i don't even know if dc is even relevant nowadays i haven't even seen dc at all hmm. yeah i'm also on the same but i'd argue so hopefully everyone here agrees right the new sets i think are pretty much just primarily focused for like rta mm -hmm. and with like the uh with the frenzy changes I, they're definitely super counterintuitive right and like yeah when you true. think about like when you think about like building yourself up for you know RTA, and I know a lot of people like are you know struggling to you know get gear and stuff like that, there's just an inherent opportunity cost to farm these new sets, right? Even if you know whatever the new Hunter team comes out, like, is it really going to add that much value? Where you know farming Wyvern, for example, lets you you know gear up six, seven, eight different units, right? Yeah, and mm -hmm. like 
are you really going to spend like your you know your sky stones just to get like one piece of you know art you know penetration set for you know something like your mlv or your a robbie for example which will give you you know an upgrade in damage right and they're definitely usable there but is it worth you know spending all that time and resource to allocate towards you know 10 percent defense penetration like you know it, it depends right i feel uh, like I think for, for me people, like yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry uh, i i think i really do agree there though like the only thing i was thinking of was like very specific units um for me i feel like i would want some of those like probably for me the very first and only unit i'll definitely put a penetration set on now i realize is c dom she's probably like one of the most she's probably top of my list for units that i need that especially i i've been running into so many freaking ml balls that are just like super tanky like i i feel like having that penetration will help me when i try cleaving um and especially for like a unit like c dom who doesn't need 100 percent crit chance so you don't need a crit set from Wyvern or anything. You just, you know, so I just run speed set, speed penetration, right? It's either that or you go speed immunity, I feel like now. Um, if you're cleaving with that. But then the only thing is like ML Violet, right? I, I'm i not sure if it's worth it to trade off what stats it is for him, depending on what build you're going. So it's so one of the ones I, I'm iffy about. So I, I think this brings in a great like... um. The conversation for how game design works, right? And I, I won't touch on that because it's kind of like a big, broad topic. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we think about units that work together, right? And Pantry said this earlier about people wanting to just pick counter after counter. There are, there still is value when you draft, you know, units that combo well together, right? Mm -hmm. When you think about strong combos that were earlier in the season, you know, the Flurry Rally combo was very, very strong, right? Less mm -hmm. powerful combos, maybe the Rual Crow you can throw in there as well, right? Or, you know, the A Ross, A Ravi combo, right? Like these are all like you know synergistic units that work really well together, and you know they don't specifically counter you know a set of units, but they're still really strong. Mm -hmm. So when you have these units that you take in pairs, right, you can get away with dropping sets like immunity, right? Even in high in RTA, for example, you know a lot of people, you know, just due to the you know hungry stat nature of those units, like you know MLV and A Ravi, for example, you know even though it is nice to have immunity and it'll work, you know, it will work out best in your favor, maybe like. You know, one in ten games for having that immunity. If you're if you're fighting for first turn, right, which is like the the core staple of why like flurry and cerise are so strong right now, you don't need immunity in those cases, right? Because you're fighting for first turn. Yeah. So you can drop the immunity in those cases for more damage. And after you take your first turn, then you have the extra value of ten percent, you know, defense penetration over every single turn that you take afterwards, right? And that's like the inherent value of like, you know, having those kind of sets, right? But obviously, like, you know, how many games is that going to work out? Are you always going to get the A Ross A Robbie combo? Are you always going to draft it? Like, those are all things you have to ask yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I guess it also really depends on your play style. I feel like the I feel like the the one thing is like immunity comes from the fact that it's a safety net for a lot of people um, in a lot of situations. So you don't get provoked early on. You don't get um, debuffed. So like, there's a lot of units that people can draft that does that like there, like there's a lot of strippers right there's a lot of strippers but there's also a lot of units that if you don't have immunity and they see that you don't um with some of those characters are like if they run like a dizzy they run like a fire cecilia like or even like a lily it's just to provoke you there early on like it could still be a pretty big uh issue i guess like even for cerise like if you don't have immunity then she's not forced to S3 anymore. She can S2 first, get her CR boost, and then come back and S3 again afterwards, which I feel like having immunity on certain units like might still be really nice, like Lilius, more of your, like I guess, supportive, tankier units, I guess, in my opinion. But yeah, it's really depending on playstyle also. Well, to just branch off that, right? You said mm -hmm. supportive units, right? I, I don't have any of the penetration sets, but like, if they're if supportive units always are going to run immunity, they're not going to run penetration set, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's more of like you know finding that like well off balance. And yeah. Obviously, like people that farm it will be able to test it. I'm not going to farm it. I'm <laughs> I'm still hunting for thirty speed items, so it's yeah. not going to happen. Okay, all right, Mister Twenty Five. Yeah, Mister Twenty. All right, Kenny. I heard about your ring, Kenny. Yeah, luck sack. Look, look, look. All right, all right. I'll be honest with you guys. Like, it's nice to have a twenty five speed HP speed set ring. But it could have been twenty eight, you know, like. Bruh. Okay, <laughs> yo, freaking, yeah, kick this guy out. Okay. <laughs> Damn. Okay. okay. Um. Um. But let's go. We'll, we'll see what happens when, because right now, like the the one thing I agree with is no one really should be farming, like the new sets 
unless you're like maybe an omega whale because you don't we don't have c13 yet so i, I personally feel like it's a waste because the sets aren't super impactful yeah they might be nice to have there like for certain you know, niche or whatnot but yeah all right so moving on can i just add one thing real quick no uh, okay <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah yeah go for it go for it go okay for it. so i think the best thing to do is actually just wait for gear packs and if you want the uh penetration set just farm it that way like have a irl farming job make some irl dollars and then use those irl dollars to uh buy a gear pack you can even reforge one piece with the new changes you know they gave you like that little box to yeah give you the reforge mats so you know just if you want that penetration set buy that penetration set man yeah, one once a month streamer. Yeah, whale right there. Yeah, this this is why he streams once a month. Yeah, he's selling his body for packs. What the heck? All right, let's, let's take let's take a step back here. All right. So the reason, all right, let's be honest here. The only reason why any of us play Epic Seven is to get that once in a lifetime piece of gear to post on Reddit. If you yeah, lose your yeah. free to play card, can you really say you're playing Epic Seven? <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I don't know. Are you are you actually free to play? By the way, I mean, like that, that's a pretty good I, title. I, I'm free to play. By the way, I don't know. Oh, what you're oh, oh, about. oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah don't worry. We're, hey, we're man, I was just that. like giving some advice. You know, some people like to spend money on uh, gotcha games. So, but yeah, not me. I'm free to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're all free to play here. Yeah, yeah, we're all, we're all free to play. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's move on to uh, the character that's coming out tonight. Um, thoughts on OP Secret. So, do you feel like she's going to be useful for you, or in the meta itself? And if so, right, what team comps do you think she can be run with? I think she's hot. Does that count? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, guy. <laughs> no, I mean, but I mean, so I think, like, in terms of Cleave units, you definitely can't go wrong, right? She's an attack buff. So, mm -hmm. there's always like a hell of value there. The problem I think that comes with Emma Cigarette is that most of the time you're still going to be banning FCC or pre-banning when you're cleaving, right? Yeah. Because you take units like the Flitica and stuff like that, and you, you don't want a 50-50 to strip the immunity, right? Yeah. And then I think in that in those scenarios, you're kind of enabling a 50-50 draft where you end up drafting in a way where you kind of end up hoping the enemy bans <clears throat> like the wrong unit. And, mm. and that's in like the sense of traditional cleave, right? So I think another problem with her is that she doesn't have extinction, right? So yeah. you're forced to draft things like the ML Lulica, for example, if someone decides to pick Arby, right? Yeah. And that puts you in a spot where you're pretty much single target DPS cleaving. Right? Is that good? I don't know. I mean, someone has to try it out, right? But there could be value in taking, you know, Cigarette, um, CDOM, and, you know, like ML Lulica, for example, and just nuke down units one by one, because then there's only one unit left, right? Mm -hmm. you, you pretty much kill two units for free. Yeah. But I think, like, in terms of, like, cleaving in general, you know, you know, greater attack buff is still so prevalent and so strong. Like, why not just double gab most of the time, right? Like, I don't know. Like, it worked for Platy. He got legend. The, the, like, the best combination, RB and greater attack buff. Okay. Name a more iconic duo. Fair, fair. I, I think one of the things I'm curious about, though, is um, what do you guys feel like... Her S1 provides a little bit of healing. Do you feel like she could work with a sort of, like, bruiser team build? Mm. I think you'd have to compare it with something like um, what fits in like a standard cleave draft, right? Because you only have four slots on your team, right? So when you think about why Emma Lulica works in standard, she provides not only mitigation for herself, but she provides you know the extinction as like the extinction, which is nice if they run well, and also the CR boost, right? But when you think about like Emma Cigarette, if she works in standard, you're kind of setting yourself up for the only safety cushion you have in standard drafts would be, you know, Guiding Light or something like that, yeah. right? There's nothing to keep and, her safe. And if you think about Guiding Light mm -hmm. as a safety cushion, if you've ever run Emma Lulica without Dingus Orb, it feels really, really bad sometimes, right? And Aeros S3 will get you, like, knocked out of stealth. You know, Emma mm -hmm. Crow S3 will get you out of stealth, right? And I think in those cases, like, because she doesn't have enough, you know, safety <laughs> behind her, it's going to be extremely difficult to draft during traditional cleave. And like, would you pick her in something with more utility? Like, you know, if you just have a pure crit damage, a Robbie, right? Like, does the same thing also res as a unit if you kill someone, right? Like, yeah, you know, it really goes both ways. Okay, fair, fair. Um, anything you two want to add in about OP Cigarette? Extra feelings? Anything else? 
I think she's more of an arena unit personally. I, I don't I don't see at least myself using her at all in RTA. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna put her uh this rotation like this first rotation is actually probably one of the best mystic rotations that they've put out. <laughs> yeah. in, in my not, not even as someone who doesn't have Dignus Orb and stuff, but like yeah. the value from like BM Haste imprints, like mm -hmm. Dignus Orb and then OP Cigarette if you don't have this unit, it's actually insane. So I for people wondering if they should pull it, they you should pull like this rotation unless you, like it's something else if better, you don't have actually. bm haste or something then yeah maybe not um, as worth. okay but i don't know like i i'm gonna use her to try to get the hellred thing done because she has healing on skill one and she's a ranger fair oh, ranger true. queen like fair. uh you, you could do i'm it, gonna dude. i mean I'm you could try it, that it probably just bloodstoned it but yeah i don't I, know if i, I have a bloodstone i'll be don't? honest you just, like, powder them all? Dusted them all? Potentially. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Right, right, right. Okay. Flatty, as a free-to-play player, let me ask you this. Is $700 yes. for an ML Pity really worth a Dagger Sakara emote? Uh, 100%. Heck yeah. Have uh, you as, not as, as a free-to-play player, I want to be able to say that I, uh, I, I did it. I got this emote free-to-play, no spending involved. You know? I did. I Honestly, there, there's one good good emote in there. It's like that that 2K emote, the haste with the middle finger, literally flick, flicking everybody off. Free to play, by the way. <laughs> that, that has to be the best emote. I kind of just want that. It's like, it's, dude, it's like imagine you RNG dual attacked me. You're about to win, but yesterday I give you the middle finger, then you lose the game. <laughs> okay. I, this I, guy's toxic. All right, all right. Now, toxic. now we all know. Now we all know. Whenever you see Pantry in your RTA matches, yeah, I, you rope him. Rope them to plus 15. What True. the heck, dude? Yeah. I True. don't even emo people. Come on. <laughs> um, I literally never emo people. I, I think one thing, uh, back on topic wise, one thing I will agree on is uh, I, I do feel like ML Cigarette might be more of an arena unit. Um, I don't know if I can fit her into like a normal draft. Like, I might be able to use her for fun, but like, there's like inherent like risks of running her in the draft. Like, Especially now with, especially now with tanky counter Arby's running rampant in RTA, like she doesn't provide. She's not really safe, I guess. I don't, like I don't I don't feel like she'll do enough damage to provide a safety net to use against Arby. So if I pick her and I only have Emma Luluka only against the Arby's, then I may or may not be screwed in that sense. So person. Personally, I feel like instead of thinking about her just being a damage healer, I think her S3 is pretty value, though. As just um, like a support? Yeah, you could still use it as support. I don't think you can go wrong with it. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, of course, Guiding Light would like be probably more of the go-to, but her being like a turn one setup with attack buff, and also I'm pretty sure she does like what buff duration uh, re reduce by one turn, and then she also does what? She, she, pushes back. Back. she pushes back. She um, pushes back. Pushes back by twenty percent, right? Yeah. There, there's actually quite a bit of effects on that. Yeah. I still think that it's pretty invaluable that there's there's like another stripper on board. To me, I just think that's like maybe like another Basaria, but maybe a more aggressive type. Mm -hmm. um, most of the time, like even though Kenny said that you know when you're cleaving, you still got to think about FCC. I mean, if you pick like something like ML Cigarette, you might be able to just like ignore the FCC and just like go straight at instead. Right, think, if they end up having a barrier, you could just S two, S three instead of actually, you know, just S three in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So you have like more. more I think often. that brings you back to the the original point where I said it's a fifty fifty draft, right? Because mm -hmm. if they do ban the cigarette, then you're cleaving yeah. the FCC, right? Because yeah, that, so that, 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 that's mm -hmm. one of the things is that. Well, when I was thinking about like, oh, do I want to pull this unit? And I think to myself, I pre ban Fallen Cecilia every time, so like the extra. Like the the extra like defense penetration, um, when they have a barrier, I feel like is almost never gonna really be used for me. Like I'll never get that. I'll rarely get that hundred percent. I feel like, cause no matter what, I feel like Fallen Cecilia is still a bigger threat, letting her be picked than like giving myself that you know barrier to hit with. So that's the only thing there. Like. But I feel like Pantry does, is right with the fan, fact that, like, the one thing I see, I guess I imagine seeing her a lot in, is, like, Rose Cleaves. Like, pairing her up with, like, like, Rose. I feel like there's more. Using it, her as, that, like, a Rose Cleave. It's just uh, that when I think about it, 
when you're th- when I'm thinking about cleaves and whatnot nowadays, you have so many ways of literally stripping. You now just have like a third extra way instead of like stripping. Like you got Ephelitica to strip one, and then you got you know Cerise that you can also strip one, and now you also have a freaking ML cigarette that can actually just strip again. And I'm just like, wait a second. There's like literally three strippers now. It's like most of the time I still think strips are actually pretty oppressive. Literally just losing, just taking away somebody's buffs is already a very, very, very big deal. Taking away immunity basically means that you can actually drop them pretty quickly. Yeah, it's mainly um, for immunity. So I, I guess what you're thinking of like is running her not as DPS, but like a faster... I mean, I'm technically still am running her as a DPS. I'm just building her more so closer to like maybe if I were to think of maybe like Tomoko, for example, like top model Lulika or like Rylet, just very fast DPS. And I'm pretty sure something like that can also just work out just fine. Okay. Right? I'm is pretty sure with something like that, you're still going to be able to enable yourself to like maybe snipe something one or two. Right? Okay. And like if you were, if I were to really think about turn order, it's literally like if, if you were to drop like CDOM and whatnot, right? Um, I feel like there's like a lot of opportunities for you to actually just use those like buffs and everything else to your advantage, especially when you're down a damage dealer. I don't know. This is like, it, it's a huge thought. I don't exactly cleave, but mm. like, I definitely feel like it can be a huge addition, especially if I were to fit in my draft. If I were to draft something like Falcon or Clary, uh, S10A with like F Lyrica and whatnot, right? I'm pretty sure I could somehow fit in my ML cigarette and add like another unit to really like, um, amp up my team, right? Actually, uh, let's if backtracking a little bit here. I, Sky King here earlier said about a uh, rose cleave, right? And when you think about when you think about like traditional rose cleave, Operator Sigur is actually really good here. I didn't think about this at all <laughs> earlier, but if you think about um the way that people used to run rose cleave, right? They took the FCC RB right away, mm-hmm. right? And when you take the FCC away, most people react with things like ML Crow, right? Mm-hmm. And when you think about what what the original rose cleave was, right? It was blue rose and then another attack buffer, right? and and that in most of those cases that was Judas, uh, not Judas, uh, Charles, Charles, Stone Charles, Charles right? Fast Charles, yeah, yeah. And the problem with Charles was that he was a green knight, right? Yeah. But now you can run Operator Cigarette instead, and mm-hmm. that not only more... gives you attack buff, it also gets rid of anything else with like you know all there any buffs that might proc later on like down the road, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think actually yeah. in this traditional blue rose cleave. She's, I think she's actually best in slot, but I don't, I don't play Blue Rose, so I don't know yeah. how good she'll be in there, but Rose Cleave is definitely something that could be viable there, especially because you do take the FCC, right? So, mm-hmm. who knows? Yeah, that's, like, uh, none of us Rose Cleave here, but I, I imagine I'm going to see that from some more of the other people. I was on Shogun's podcast, and we talked about that, like, Light was there, so I imagine he's probably going to try it. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, wait, what do you mean? Light is a tank player. You didn't know? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, Light was He's the night drafter. Yeah, you're right, you're right, I forgot about that, mm-hmm. yeah. I do think that, like, regardless, this is kind of a off topic, but not really, I, I, I feel like, I feel like I have to pull this unit, because mm. given Smilegate's history, like, if she's not performing, she's gonna get some, like, game-changing buffs. So, if she's not as strong as people think she is, like, something's gonna happen, and her kit's going to be altered just a bit, and then she's gonna become, like, the next best ML5. <clears throat> so, like... That, that, that's one thing that I hate, but... I feel like... It, it, I feel, it feels bad skipping, right? Because you don't, you never know, right? Yeah, because it, I hate the but, fact that, that that mentality is now in our heads, is that, like, we're scared that this unit that we skip on that we think is not good is going to get buffed and become like OP. And yeah, that's it's, the thing. It's like because it, we've seen that happen too much now in the past. It's a legitimate fear, I think, for yeah. a lot of players. Because, like, uh, I mean, you look at Emil Ball right now, right? Like, Emil Ball is actually a really strong unit. I would say. And, like, he wasn't even that bad before, but, like, mm-hmm. Emil Ball is, like, pretty problematic for a lot of, like, these... Uh, speed cleavers and so like, like you were saying like i you can't kill the ball with cdom or like he's too tanky yeah. and then he just horses you so like i feel yeah it just feels bad because i don't think i'd ever really use cigarette i mm. i don't have like that speed gear to give her but like in the situ if the situation ever arises where like she becomes like the next ml tywin like i'm gonna be kicking myself for not having this unit I just think that the meta currently, as of right now, just prefer niche, a lot of niche units, like a combination of multiple niche units in conjunction with each other. 
Mm -hmm. um, because of that, like before it used to be very synergistic. Like we all, we only play like based on synergies, um, not really too much of anything else, but now it ends up being like, like I said before, uh, going back to like, Hey, look, we're just countering like one, one after another, right? Yeah. Having niche units nowadays just feels that you can basically face off against any any kind of play style that you uh, that you typically go against, and you don't really have to worry about it, right? It's like right now I don't have ML Crow or my haste. It, it, it's kind of weird because then just not having specific units or specific niches that counter these things ends up being a very problem, like a very huge problem for me, which forces me to play something else, mm -hmm. right? It's like if I were to like think about like ML Cigarette, right? If I want that strip with attack buff, like that could be a very big thing that, that could set up my team. But I just don't, I just don't know whether, um, you, you just don't know wh when it's going to actually happen until you actually spot it. Right. Mm. Okay. I mean, it's, it's a fair point. Cause it's like, at that point, it's like, you don't know. I, I guess we won't really know until we test her out a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, honestly, I think the uh, the safe play here is just to pull every MO5 that you can <laughs> using the yep, there play go. store code X Sky King for a five percent <laughs> discount. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, does that actually exist? Shit. No, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I think you, I think you leaked his OnlyFans. What are you talking? Uh, about? Uh, wait, what, what? What do you mean? Oh no, yeah, exclamation mark OnlyFans. Yeah, join there to uh, support. Yeah. Um. Anyways, um. I mean, I'll try to get her because I feel like. I I want to try fitting her into my cleave at least, um. But yeah, I, I think the, only, the the biggest thought for me is for people running rose cleave, it fits into there. So then you have the double attack buffer, so that's your two CR pushes kind of thing. But ML Cigarette instead of CR pushing pushes back combat readiness. So we'll have to see what happens there. What's the percentage uh, chance on like the strip and the pushback? Is it all one hundred? One hundred. Yeah, everything's one hundred. Just fifteen percent. Oh, sorry. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. 50%, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, so. That's good. Yeah. If well, it was like Berseria where it's like 85%, like, I don't know. It, it would feel not as good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, I think Berseria skill 3 feels real bad. Yeah. I gotta say. Actually, Solara's right, yeah. It's kind of like a Basar that does damage, actually. It's neutral element, too. But, <clears throat> mm -hmm. yeah, it doesn't, like, apply debuffs. It's, it's like a pseudo Basar that does damage. Alright, uh, and well, last topic, technically. Um, yeah, thoughts about the new unit, Mort and his artifact. What do you guys think? Step on me sideways. Okay, yeah, stop. <laughs> oh, I call, him daddy. <laughs> call him daddy. Um, <laughs> call him daddy, dude. <laughs> Alright. Uh, All right. So, I mean, if you don't, if you want to go first, I'll just go. Yeah, go for it. Because there's a lot to go over him. I feel like. Cause... Yeah. I actually think that this is an easy skip banner. I actually don't think he's that good at all. Oh. I think there's games where his initial S three will pop off, and that's all that will happen, right? And then there's games where he's just a solid unit if you get the S one S two follow up afterwards, right? And it's essentially ten percent higher odds of being a gag bamer. Where when he does proc his stuff. <laughs> It's it's still good, but it's not tempo swinging, right? And I feel like at that point, it's just like it's kind of like whatever, honestly. I, I think like his S three is good, but it's not OP, right? And I think if you specifically use him in the RTA context, which I'm assuming most people would, right? You have crit imprint, which is you know decent, but you have units like Shu that also have crit imprint, it's like not that good at all. But you have people that run, especially in the current meta. Yeah, like things like Wonder's Potion Vial, right? Mm -hmm. Which pretty much mitigates a lot of his like you know threat, and it, it kind of makes it feel kind of weird, honestly. I, I really feel like this is like a pretty easy skip, and I I don't think I'm gonna pull him at all. I think okay. I agree with Kenny. So I, I guess the easiest question to really ask yourself is he gonna take a turn, right? Like, Ooh, wait, before I, anything I, else, I, chat. Yeah, if you're pulling because he's hot. Yeah, 100% pull for him. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, if you're pulling for the chest, you're pulling for the stripping man, do it. Dude, he, he has some good posture. His sprite literally <laughs> just be standing up straight, bro. It's like, it's been like, it, dude, it's not even, uh, dude. He's like yeah. bending over, like chest out. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, he reminds you of that kill or kill character. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, what were you saying, Pantry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I personally agree. I, I, I agree with Kenny's thoughts on 
why you should probably just skip him completely. I don't really think he's too amazing either. Um, he basically suffers the same problems as most bruisers nowadays. Like, are they really going to take a turn, right? If, if they're not going to take a turn, most likely, you're probably your entire team is probably already dead, right? Um, nowadays, from based on like what we already said earlier, games are decided so quickly that almost most bruiser characters are almost irrelevant. Mm -hmm. I just feel like his release has been a little bit like a season two. It's probably the best way to put it, right? Now, like when there's so many deciders of a match, I don't think him taking turn two, like literally I try putting my gear on him. It's like, am I really going to try to use like a 200 speed character? And is this really going to work? I, I, I wouldn't really think so. Okay. Okay. Watchable. Yeah, uh, I think he's a season too late, personally. Uh, okay. I don't know. I, I don't... <sighs> I mean, he looks nice, like... But... <laughs> <laughs> That's the only is thing that going through. Is that, gonna, yeah, yeah, is that going to win you know, RTA matches? That. Probably not. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm probably going to pull for... I'll throw some, like, bookmarks towards him because, like... Again, I don't want to be, like the person without this unit if they are like wow this unit sucks so uh let's give them a lot of buffs like mm -hmm. it's that same thing I, i'll probably pull them like but I i'll know. probably pull one just to have him to try because i i am curious because like he, he brings a lot of new stuff which is interesting right um like i think he's the first unit that inflicts injuries yes so new it's, it's kind of like a new I like guess it's the first unit that has a new mechanic, so it's kind of interesting. Um, I actually feel it kind of interesting that... I feel like his skill kit is really loaded. That's one of the things. Like, when I first read him, he has, he has a lot, and he does a lot. And then that ends up being, like, a similar thing of, like... Like you guys were talking about, right? Can he survive to get his turn to do everything, though? Right? Can he can he survive enough to do that? Like one thing I do agree on is like in, in the higher ranks of RTA now, a lot of the times is for most people, you end up either killing them first or you know like one or two of the units are gonna die very early on. Um, I don't know if he'll make a big enough difference there for that. We don't know his multipliers yet, right? Are they? No, we do not. No. We won't well, find out until after maintenance. So someone posts on Reddit. Yeah. We'll All have to wait for that. Resident leaker. Yeah. Unless <laughs> unless for some reason his like multipliers are like insane where like you can use them to like insta gib someone. I feel like it um I feel like it might be a little bit difficult to uh run him with like conventional teams. Cause he doesn't have any self sustain thing, right? Where you see that a lot with like Ravi, A Ravi. He does. He, he does, does he? his S3 heals him. S3 heals no, but, him. No, but not yeah. like S1 wise, right? So he doesn't, oh, have yeah. a, he doesn't have a constant like sustain, right? A Ravi Ravi, every time they S1, they're going to heal. They're annoying. A Ravi has that passive. Um, Spectre Tenebria, like, um, can't be targeted, right, for most people. Like, a lot of the, I, I realized one thing is most of the damage dealers, um, they have some sort of mechanic that can keep themselves alive right now. All like the prominent damage dealers currently, right now, that we're seeing. In like a bruiser setup, so I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I think he's bad yet, because <laughs> like he has so much in his kit. I I want to feel like he's good, but at the same time, I don't see him fitting into like comp, which is a bad thing. Like, if you can't see him fitting into your team comp already, then it's like, is there a point pulling for him? And then not to mention there's supposed to be the release re-release of limited possibly like cerise and dn possibly coming back cerise more than anything there's just yeah. so many units contesting his spot right now so many new units are coming out including now there's like ravi and lilius that are literally mm -hmm. coming out like after maintenance yeah i, I mean i think ravi might also counter him pretty hard though like i feel like he's like similar to the sense of like if someone picks alencia then you're gonna see someone the other person pick ravi now and the fire Ravi kind of like fire Ravi so strong. Like she like shits all she shits all over Alencia. I mean to really put it though, 
right? Even though we're talking like a lot of bad things about him, I still think that he might have some merit within other content. Like, let's say, for example, Guild Wars. He could mm-hmm. be that one cup that Elbrus is you and then Prophet <laughs> F3 put crit resistance on everybody and we like, wait a minute, hold up. I can't cleave anymore, right? Like, I, 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 I'm going to be real, okay? There, there's definitely going to be times where, yeah. of course, we're not going to see these units work in, in RTA. And of course, like RTA is just too fast now. Mm-hmm. But we might definitely see it. Like he could be like another Charles that works in Guild War defense. That's right? true. And we and we already see Guild War defense literally, dude, everything sucks. Everything's dying. Dark Corvus. He could Everyone, be like everything is just like left and right. So many offensive options. And that's like, I'm pretty true. sure I'm pretty sure that he will have like places. Um with that kind of kit, it can be quite disruptive, along with the fact that he is a knight after all. Like mm-hmm. I have like a lot of high hopes for him personally. Uh I feel like one of the things you, you touched upon is really right. A lot of people right now, we see in Guild Wars defense, they run, um, especially if they don't have a lot of ML5s, right? Mm-hmm. Their team is going to consist of like Charles, SSB plus one. Um, and then the other team, there isn't really like a strong green unit, earth unit that can fit in unless you have like good, good enough speed gear to run like a Basar. Um, even then you'll get counter now by like Holiday Euphine sort of like style combos unless you have like double strippers or something that can damage first. Um, or... You know, someone runs Alencia, but I feel like Alencia has started to slowly fall off on being good on Guild Wars defense. So, like, having, like, an, uh, having someone like this that could, like, stop cleaves, but at the same time be somewhat tanky and, like, kind of, like, maybe, like, provide a bit for your team might be good. I, so, I, I just think just that he with? has RNG. He has RNG in his kit. Yeah. That, that, that's what I like. Yeah, it, that's the it, problem, right? It's, it's 10% higher than Gab, so it's, like, not even mm-hmm. that, like... <laughs> when a proc it's like not even that good so that's like the main problem yeah i think something to like consider though is like you mentioned earlier about like overpowered kits right like mm-hmm. when you think about units like fallen cecilia she doesn't have a great kit but she's so super strong like, yeah she only has a one turn provoke she has a mitigation and then she has a skill that's all she has yeah but when you think about like a strong unit that has a good kit for example like fire ken has a great kit right yeah he has s2 speed up defense break s3 can stun s1 can burn that's mm-hmm. a great kit but you never see Fire Ken really be used that much. And mm. that's, I think that that's like... Wait, the, I, I uh, use him most my Guild Wars, though. <laughs> oh, no, true. But, but RTA, R- RTA-wise, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, like... Premium content. Premium, yeah. yeah, have you seen the new banners? It's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, the, oh my dude, God. I love the new rewards, yeah. I, I, I was... I, mean, I was I was hoping we would get something like just like the banners, actually. Like, okay, I, yeah. I, I, honestly, I'm... Man, I don't GZ, know. a new banner. Hey, where's Fleet's banner? Huh. <laughs> um yeah um but i don't know yeah I- i'm still a little hesitant about him right now like my-, my initial thought when i first saw him i was like oh this guy looks op and then i more like thought about like what team comps i'm gonna be running him in and i realized mm, it's kind of weird for rta especially but yeah guild wars guild wars he might have um he might have a place there i don't know i just feel like on Guild War, if you put him on defense, you just bizarre him. Right? Bro, it's very easy. Just FCC, yeah. more, and T-Cern. Bada bing, bada boom. No I one can Dark Corvus you no more. Yeah, but then you just <laughs> bizarre us to speed that team. Um, I mean, Bassar works with against most team comps. I would, like, 100% just, like, bizarre as a speed, yeah. Maybe. I mean, there's always, like, Guild Wars is kind of hard to do. Like, it, it's Guild hard. Wars is hard to make a good there's defense. Too many, there's too many units now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Guild Wars is hard to, like, make, like, a really, really strong Guild Wars defense. And most of the Guild Wars defenses that you see that win, it, the, like, as you say, there is some sort of RNG involved. If it's not RNL, it's greater attack buff. One of those things catches you or off Charles. guard. Or Charles. Or Charles. Or Charles. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah. All right. So we'll leave that there. For, I'll, oh, I'll open it up to chat. Yeah. See if there's anything like we can still go on this topic or if there's anything specific from chat that you feel like you can, um, you want to pick up one or two questions. Um, but uh, let, let, let us know if there's anything specific you guys feel like should be thought about. Thoughts on bed? I see. Anyways, yeah, ignoring that useless person. Um, uh, they keep releasing new u- cleave units, tanks, bruisers, RV counters, and CC counters. 
Yeah, why no new control unit? Good. I don't like control. <laughs> Cerise. Cerise is technically... Uh, yeah, the Cerise buff kind of changes. I mean, we're getting a new Tenebria, right? So maybe that'll be mm. like... Oh yeah, how do you guys think about that? Tenebria has so many things. I think it's really it's really weird, because at first I thought it was just going to be a skin, and then like, oh yeah, it's a new unit. Yeah. And there's like, a Fire Tenebria, there's a Fire Tenebria skin, there's a Spectre Tenebria, the Spectre Tenebria skin, now we're getting a new Tenebria. Like, yeah. what element is this Tenebria going to be? Light? Ice? Like, ice? Probably ice, and it'll be broken, because we all know. Water Honestly, knowing, knowing how Mort is an Earth unit, I wouldn't be surprised if a blue Tenebria comes out as a fire unit, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's probably going to be a ranger as well. <laughs> oh, true. Yeah, we yeah, yeah true. Yeah. It, does, we need it, more does rangers. it actually makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, about dual attacks in RTA, what do you guys, what do you think? Okay, I mean, this is going to be, uh, we went over this a lot with a lot of other people, but... All right, let's just, let's just hear opinions, wise. Uh, first of all, uh, let's just go on. Whether or not you feel like it should be removed in RTA, yes or no? No, there's no way. You think, all right, so I think this comes back into earlier when I was talking about game design, and this is a mm -hmm. big, broad question about how you balance units and things like that. The category of players that play Epic 7 play like these sort of games that have RNG factors in the game, right? And dual attacks, I, like, yeah, they suck. But it's part of a, it's part of the mechanic where it allows people to play on a relatively even playing field, right? Where you have a player that doesn't have the best gear, for example, and they can still win off the dual attacks, and I think that's perfectly okay because they're only going to win fifteen percent of the time, right? I think that term, like in in that scenario, it, it, it's fine because the people that play these kind of games, right? I, I think you know are okay with that kind of RNG in general, right? Mm -hmm. I, I compare something like Epic Seven to you know, different sort of like card games, for example, right? And in card games, sometimes you do get unlucky, right? Yeah. And even though there's not like a dual attack mechanic, there still are mechanics where they catch you off guard. Mm -hmm. And even though there are other factors in the game that have RNG, like I don't think dual attacks cause, you know, a, a, a problem where it really just throws the game out of balance, right? Like, yeah, it sucks to lose sometimes off a dual attack, but mm -hmm. it only happens so often, right? It really doesn't happen that much. One of the things I was thinking about is, uh, like, I'll be honest, like, I really feel like it should be removed from RTA. That was my, uh, that's been my thought for a long, long time. I was talking to some people about that, and, like, one of the things they're right about is, for a lot of people, it gives them, like, as you say, like, it lets new players play on an even playing ground. And it gives them, like, a chance to win, even if their gear is not up there. Right, if the gear like there's some gear disparity, you know, like obviously the gear is not as good, but if they fifteen percent, you know, they get some dual attacks here and there, game changing, lets them get a win. Um, I feel like I realized I was thinking maybe for because there there was a question someone asked, which was, yeah, how long do you think or how, if you think Epic Seven can you know get to the esport level, where that's when I feel like that maybe that's where my thoughts are of if you're going for that point, I feel like. Maybe that's when I want the dual attacks removed when people are at like the same level and there's already like a lot of RNG factors are from other places where if you want the dual attacks, you have to run a unity set. But at the same time, you can't split those up, unfortunately, because, you know, if you split those up, then that's like two different RTA modes with you having to like run different gear with kind of thing, which wouldn't really work. So... I'm yeah. just going to throw this out there. I don't think Epic 7 will ever reach true esport level, and I don't think any mobile game like this will... Like, I don't think you can consider any game with like this amount of R like RNG to be an, an esport. And you can like talk about like Summoner's War and games like that as well. Like I don't consider Summoner's War an esport, and I think they have a far more refined RTA system. Um, I think the biggest thing for me is that I, I don't imagine it can get to like a big esport level, but like... I would hope, I guess, as someone playing Epic 7, I would hope it gets to a point of at least where Summoner's War is now. But... I still honestly think dual attacks yeah. are fine. And, like, mm -hmm. past the reasons that I mentioned earlier... Yeah. Like, when you think about, like... So, there, there's just an inherent cost to test things out, right? You, you don't just get to try out everything because you have to spend gold or you have to spend sky stones to get the gear, right? Mm -hmm. So... People don't aren't really in a spot to test all these variables, right? And that's one of the things where you know you don't see the benefit of like you know the what was it Unity set or something like 
right? Stuff like that, because no one gets to test it, right? Because you have to invest your gear into that stuff. And another another layer to this, right, is like there's a lot of controllable factors in the game where when you draft a certain way, most of the time you should expect to reasonably win, right? I think if you do want to approach something at an esport level, and I, I don't I don't think Epic Seven will get there, but if you do want to approach something like that, you not only do you need small gate support for stuff like that and running tournaments, mm -hmm. but the other thing is that you have to set up set it up in a way for the format to accommodate, you know, the RNG, right? So like, do you is it really just a best of three that you know really stresses like, you know, someone's like you know, uh, I don't know, like ability to draft and things like that, right? Yeah, I don't know. It's like it's more of like understanding how to format the game to accommodate where it stands currently. Yeah, that I don't think has been explored yet. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's a good way to phrase it. It's kind of like vague, but I'm not sure. How no, to like... I, no, it makes sense. It, it goes back to Washwell's point of how Summoner's War has a much more refined RTA, like the, the whole RTA system itself. Which I mean, unfortunately, like Epic Seven, still I would consider a new game. Like it's. It's two years, but I think oh, we I have still eight more years to go. Oh my god! <laughs> eight more years to go. Uh, we'll, oh. we'll get to esports level in eight years. Yeah. Okay. Fair. 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 Ten year uh, plan. Ten year guys. plan. Ten year, ten year plan, plan, boys. <laughs> We're only no. year two. Yeah. I like. I. I never expect. I'll never expect Epic someone to get to a point of like. It can never get to a point of like leagues, CS:GO. You know any of those? Because those are those are actual skill based games, right? It's it's purely skill, right? Skill team and whatnot right like nothing else there's no other rng factors but i'll never expect epic 7 to get there but i do hope and like i guess as a player of epic 7 i would like to see it get to a point epic 7 get to a point where it's at least where summoners war is you know they can the company itself can host big tournaments you know we can see things that are exciting for us right like it's not it's not like i'll ever want to participate it's not like i can ever participate in my opinion right but It'll be exciting to see a game that I enjoy get to a point where you know, it you know it, it can be intense. And I mean that comes from RTA ladder, but that can only go so far. From rather you know watching an actual large grand scale tournament, grand large with friends and whatnot. I mean, you just saw. Uh, well, I don't know if you just saw, but SWC just held like a like some of us were just held yeah. a tournament for like a hundred thousand right? dollars. Yeah, like and like sponsored from Com to us, like the company ran this tournament like they had people come in and cast like uh and i i would like to see smellgate do that mm -hmm. and i don't think it's going to come within the next year i don't think it'll come within the next two years personally yeah. um i think there's just too many too many things that would have to happen and i just don't foresee them happening yeah it's unfortunate i, I do agree there's there's still too much for epic so i get to that point but yeah I, 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 I know, is a small indie company, so you yeah. gotta give them, you know, some props, right? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta, gotta point, give them time. Like, honestly, I think there's no, there's no higher level of skill than pressing three buttons in RTA. Honestly, it takes, it's pretty difficult. Sometimes I time out. Sometimes I misclick. <laughs> that, that's pretty exciting. <laughs> Sometimes I fat finger. Yeah. Okay. True. Hey, oh. like the most exciting thing for me is when uh, I see the little greater tack, you know, Gab. Uh, you uh, see that? You already know you're in a good spot, man. True, true, true. Yeah, yeah. That, that's when one person says, oh, yeah, and the other person says, shit. It's like, am I going to get Gab game or am I going to be the Gab gamer? Uh, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself. And then um, turns out you just have to be the Gab gamer. Ah, uh, yeah. And I, if you don't get the Gab, then you're obviously you, worse at the video game. Yeah, so. that, obviously you got uh, outskilled, right? Yeah, well, outskilled. Easy, easy. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Um,. All right. Anything else you guys want to go over? Is there anything else in chat that's mm -hmm. that's scrolling through? Chat's going so fast, no one's gonna see I'm gay. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Was that derp? That's probably derp. All right. <laughs> um, but uh, all right. I give I, more than fifty inventory. I haven't actually had uh, inventory problem in a very long time yeah nope. i haven't had inventory issues in a while now but keep in mind you can give your um like equipment to like fodders and stuff and that clears it out of, out of your inventory i didn't know that until recently so mm -hmm. pretty pretty important oh the yeah. new gvg rd oh actually. true that artifact is 
It's nice. It, it looks pretty yeah, good. It looks nice. pretty good to use in certain situations. It, no, all situations. Every it's, situation. It's, it's, well, still, it's literally oath key and then like a non HP reliant portrait. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty nuts. I, I feel like I'm the, pretty sure that's like Best in Slot Arena artifact. That that's yeah. so good, dude. Yeah. I, I think the only thing for that for me is like I I feel like for what, what, certain what? units like that like if you're going for like pure damage like sometimes i might want like a pure damage artifact if i don't need that extra hit chance which but i mean yeah, like you, you kind of talked about this right like <laughs> you're missing four percent damage but you're trading off for the ability to like ignore the moonlight dream blade right like for example like, like all these moonlight dream blade counter arby's if you want to like try to cleave them mm -hmm. let's say like obviously with judge keys say there's like this chance that you just get countered and die right but like mm -hmm. i feel like the hit chance on that is much more important and then you just back it up with like an ML haste, uh, as opposed to just like four percent more damage, right? Because if yeah. you like, let's say you get real, really unlucky and you double miss twice, you're probably dead. Mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest things for me is like if I'm running like a Judge Kise, like sometimes I'll find like ML Ken teams. Funny enough, I still see ML Kens, <clears throat> but uh, like with this artifact, I don't think I could survive an ML Ken, which is like when I would prefer the Draco Plate that gives me the damage plus the mitigation with Aureus of Fallen Cecilia to survive at ML Ken, so I can still judge Kisei a team, but with this artifact, I wouldn't need be, be able to. So, like, it, like, I feel like I wouldn't use this on Judge Kisei in certain cases, but, like, obviously when it comes to, like, a Rylet or something else, then, yeah, that's when I, like, want to swap it on. It's like, that's the only time I see it being situational, unfortunately, which makes it a little annoying sometimes, but I mean, like, it's still nice. that's the great thing about, like, Arena, right? Because you have the luxury of picking your artifact before yeah. you go into a fight, right? So mm -hmm. that's where I think it has, like, super, super value. Yeah. I feel and like everyone like... should at least make one copy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you should probably max on the break it just to get the max. Yeah, you want, if, you, you want the, the max, max hit damage. chance. You want the max damage. Otherwise, you're, you'd are be losing out too much, I feel like. You can't have, like, a single copy with, like, a four copy or anything. It is and really nice transmit in this area. stone, dude. That's that's one gold transmit stone. That's one sixth yeah. of your ML cigarette. As <laughs> as a free to play player, I really do need those transmit stones to like try yeah. to get all these new OP ML fives that come. Because again, free to play, and uh, just got to get every opportunity, right? Mm -hmm. Ah, you too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Question. Um, I think I'll have a last question here. So I have a question for the RTA players. I was originally someone who suggested the show. Who had first pick prior to the pre ban phase? Does anyone on the panel think there are additional changes that can be made to improve RTA, such as add the pre bans into the draft order instead of a simultaneous pre ban? I actually hate the fact that they show who gets first pick. I actually think the first pick like change was actually super good in terms of drafting. I think a lot of the, the skill in Epic 7 RTA comes from the draft phase, right? Where mm -hmm. a lot of the time you see a really good player and just say, like, All right, I, I just lost this draft. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna lose this game unless I get dual attacks, right? And I think having that like first pick like shown gives so much value in terms of knowing what to first pick and to ban right away, right? When we think about highly contested units, and this is like coming from someone who likes a um like a consistent like win rate. I, I play very standard, but I play very consistent teams that are strong, right? So for me, for example, if I have first pick, I will always leave Flurry unbanned, right? Because I always want Flurry. But it sucks playing against Flurry. So when I'm second pick, I will always ban the Flurry, right? Mm -hmm. And I'll and then you know mix it up from there. So that mm -hmm. that's where like I think that change has actually been super super beneficial. I think in terms of um making improvements to RTA, I think you never want to make a hasty decision right away, knowing not knowing how it'll it'll affect like you know the environment that people play in, right? So I, I can't say anything like off the top of my head, but you know, there, I think there's definitely improvements to be made, especially when you hear you know people's opinions on different aspects. Okay, that's fair. I feel like may, maybe for me personally, like I, I don't mind the I, I didn't really mind the show first pick. Like sometimes it would matter or not, but I guess with my playstyle, it didn't matter as much. Um, I don't feel like there's anything we could add into the current RTA like drafting because i feel like right now with where we're at it's actually we're at a pretty solid point now with how you know pre-bands work how uh picks and bands work and whatnot there i feel like, i feel like it's pretty good now with how that works so I, I don't feel like there's anything that could be added 
um, that could make it better. Maybe maybe we can just do like simple bug fixes, right? You know that sometimes mm. there's like when someone they takes a turn, for example, you have like no time to react and you lose your turn right away. Yeah. Or if you DC out of a game, sometimes you know when you queue up again, you automatically forfeit the game. Maybe we can like work on fine tuning like the bugs in the actual RTA system, mm-hmm. and then work on like improvements to RTA instead, right? Maybe yeah. that shift in focus would be probably better for everyone. Because there's a lot of times like if with the whole like not taking a turn, if there's too many animations that happen at the end of a turn and your turn goes and you're just like, well, I guess I just lose now. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it feels really bad. Or like when you DC out of a match and then it won't let you queue again because you're technically still in the match, uh, maybe adding a way to like either reconnect to the match. I don't know if that would be feasible, but like, uh, like reconnect to the match or like just better stability, I guess, between like, matches because it feels bad losing like 14 15 points uh because you just randomly disconnect versus like actually losing the match mm-hmm. uh yeah I- it's unfortunate it, it always ends up happening here and there so like that part i don't know if like that part i feel like is really hard to make consistent because like sometimes there's other factors rather than just the game itself right yeah so i actually one other thing that i'd like to talk about is just how like the point system works in RTA. I think that is something that could be looked at in the future because I think the point system and the way like matchmaking works is abysmal. I I think it's like one of the worst things about RTA. And it's why you see such like an exponential climb in points like on those last days so? with just yeah. I, I think it's terrible. I feel like uh, like because one of the things I'm afraid of, like I, I actually like the current system because of the fact that I, I don't want them to change it to like like I, I think if anything, they could fine tune the current system, so it's a little bit better. But I don't want them to like go to a point where they change it, um, where like you win, everyone like wins and lose. Like the arena change, I don't want people to win and lose like the same amount. Whatever. No, match. that's not what I'm right. saying. But like yeah. with how, like if you look at champion, right, it went from two thousand points to thirty five hundred points. So yeah. like the point discrepancy between like rank 10,000 champion and rank 1 champion like is is massive right but they're all technically in the same quote unquote oh, rank oh no, no, no. i think i think what you what, what i guess what you want to say is like you want to add like the extra tiers in between to separate well, right? not just that but like if if like let's say you played someone in champion but yeah. you were like a thousand points difference like you would still only get like 2 points per win but lose like however many points, like 10, 11 points per loss, even though you're technically the same rank, right? Yeah, like, no, 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 but so like if, if they add in like tiers, like how like normal arena has like champion 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we add that into the actual um, RTA ladder 2. So if you're like champion 1, you face against someone like, you, you'll get matched against someone in your same ranking, which is champion 1 then, then you're not going to randomly match against like, well, Less likely chances of you matching against someone in champion five. If you match against someone champion one or champion two, the point gain is a little bit better then, because like they're uh, closer to your level. I, I think this kind of like makes the queue times way too long for a phone game. First of all, mm. and then like I think second of all, right? Like I think there's multiple things that people have brought up. Right? One of the things is like, you know, it'd be nice to um have some sort of benefit for having a high win rate. Right? If you if you do well, I think you should be rewarded for you know doing well. Right? I think, and then. The other thing is like people always say like you know to have more value in the games that you play put a cap on like ranked games or whatever that you can play in like a certain time period i I think there's a problem with that too where a lot of the enjoyment out of this game is the fact that you can play things like rta endlessly right yeah and when you when you take away the ranked aspect of it and you add things like normal games like does that really offer the same level of enjoyment because then people are just going to start like doing random things and you don't really get you know the maximum amount of enjoyment that I think more competitive players get, right? Yeah. So it's it's a pretty broad topic, and there's like many things to always consider, right? Yeah, I think I it's know. really difficult. You're you're right about that. Like, if they limit the amount of games you can play in RTA, it it would also kill it for a lot of people because I I know a lot of people like to play RTA just to, you know, a lot of times try new things in the ladder, right? They just like to keep queuing and playing, right? So, but yeah, I think there's a lot of things like as Washable was talking about, like we could fine tune a lot of things that could make it better. And sorry, what were you going to say, Pantry? Nothing. Never mind. 
Oh, he basically answered. Oh, right. actually, uh, Platy, I have a solution to you about losing points to a low champ player. Just don't lose. <laughs> yeah. Okay. True. 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 But like, sake. okay. No, but if you think about like in the last day of Legend, right? Like, yeah. people who are in champion around like the thirty four hundred, thirty five hundred points, and like you're also in Legend, right? Like, the the skill and like the gear levels are pretty much the same, right? Yeah. Like. But like the point, just like the point differences, like what you gain and what you lose, are not the same, mm -hmm. even though you're at the same level. Like, I guess that's my biggest issue. Is just, and that's why, like, you see, like, the cutoff just climb super high. Yeah, right. It's because like you get all these people that like a legend player that loses to someone who's in champ, and, and then that champ player like gains a lot of points, right? Yeah, and then they're they just increase that cutoff, and then like they lose. To someone who is in champ and then that person like jumps them right and then the cutoff goes up just a little bit more and a little bit more mm -hmm. i don't know yeah, i think a, there could be some refinement there too uh, it's a hard situation to like like it'll, it'll take a lot of testing and like trial and error like to be honest i really wish um i really wish where there were like mini preseasons where like they would every preseason or mini preseason they would switch it up and add in a new They'll, they'll, they'll like change something about the RTA point system or add in something and test it out in the preseason to see like um, how people like it. And then like, oh, what's the feedback, right? How did you guys like the RTA being I'll... like this? Okay. I feel I'm like they should do that with though. the frenzy changes, right? Like, I feel like the frenzy the changes. The feedback doesn't yeah. matter, right? Like, they did that for Guild Wars Season 2 preseason, right? They asked for a feedback and it didn't. Well, matter. okay, that was a little different. That that was a little. I, I, is it different though? Like, it's different, it different in the sense of like I feel like, like w when I when I say ask for feedback, be like, it, not like, like back then I was the one who like, went around asking for the feedback to give it them. Like this is more of something like, give it through like a survey or something. You know, like I guess. So but like, I I also feel like the friend the changes and the, the feedback they would get from like 90% of the players would be from players that aren't even competing like for the highest ranks, right? Mm -hmm. I think these changes to be like relevant to us have to come from us. It can't come from the vast majority of like these RTA players because like if you listen to the 90% as opposed to the 10%, like the 10% is just going to get like fed up, right? Like I well, one thing well it, it ends up being one of the things where people always say like Balances are always done at the top, not at the bottom, which it, a lot of the times it is true. I just, I, I just realized that for this game, I don't know if like it can always factor in, right? Because like, I feel like for this game, like a lot of times, the bottom matters a little bit more than. But if you want this to be like you sometimes. were, you aspire this game to be like an esport. And if you ever want that to actually happen, you have to listen to the, the top end players for that. Yeah, no, for sure. It, I agree with that part. It, it can't be like the bottom like half of all like E seven players because like at the end of the day, they're not the ones like competing. It's not the the change doesn't truly impact them to the same degree as someone who is climbing, right? Yeah. So I think if you want this game to reach those like higher levels of like competition, you have to start like balancing at least rta right as the most competitive game mode like in e7 you have to start balancing that around like what the top end players want versus yeah. like what the majority of players want I, th I think you made a mistake there platy i think the most competitive mode is guild wars um, <laughs> you're right you're yeah, right true. actually true <laughs> most what, competitive what am i mode. saying yeah actually, why are you laughing i'm, very, I'm being very serious <laughs> this is why life is rank one come on dude <laughs> <laughs> okay um all right um i mean i'll leave it there like it's gonna be one of the topics we'll always talk about i think that will mm -hmm. always be asked right? it's it's a huge thing to talk about over the whole scheme of the game so but with that said thank you guys for joining me on today um as always it was fun and uh, i haven't done podcasts in a long time so uh, appreciate the last minute joining and uh if you guys want you shout your youtube twitch whatever you guys want um I'll start from pantry again then washball kenny Lo, what up? So you guys can find me on at youtube.com slash panshui. Basically anything slash panshui is basically me right there. I hope nobody impersonates me, but yep, that's basically it. Wash. Thanks for having me. Uh yeah, you can find me twitch.tv slash wash Uh I stream once a month, very active. Uh or uh 
youtube.com slash watchable pod by i also post one video once a month so again <laughs> premium content coming out at a very premium rate uh yeah and kenny yeah you guys can follow me at uh twitch.tv slash e11ectrik i stream <laughs> I, I have to spell it out because all right i never updated my name from all right so honestly electric is pretty cool right so when you're 13 years old you're like all right i can't take the name electric so i'm gonna add two ones and we never changed. I never grew up. My mental is still 12 years old. But if you guys want to come watch me play RTA, I'm pretty good, I think. I have pretty quality gear, honestly. So yeah, we'll try to. Uh, I'll try to stream more often, but it's definitely a work in progress. All right. And uh, thank you. All right. Peace out, guys. <clears throat> Thanks for having us. Take it easy.